Hey guys, we are just going to talk a little bit real quick about what all you can bring in the event that you are going to respond to a natural disaster to aid in the initial phase of rescue and recovery. Um, this is not the end all be all guide or anything like that. These are just some things that I think um, are essential and very helpful to possibly bring. Um, that way you can aid to the best of your ability and not be a hindrance, really. Um, so first things first, uh, we're going to talk footwear here because that is always important. Um, I feel it is best to bring or wear a good pair of lace-up boots. Um, I don't... Oh, clear that. I don't recommend slip-ons. They can fall off. Water gets into them real easily. Um, these are just your basic... Uh, waterproof Durashox by Wolverine. Great boots. I love them. You can see they are covered in oil from lots of time in a shop. Um, also recommend bringing a pair of athletic shoes or something that will dry quickly. Um, you can put these on bare feet. They don't really hurt your feet. You have to go traipsing around in any kind of water. These will keep your feet protected while not weighing you down. Um, I find it's pretty easy to swim in these even if you have to. Um, so those are always good. If you get back to your truck or get back to a camp or something overnight and you're just beating feet, kind of grabbing a bite to eat, taking a break, flip-flops, always a good idea. Um, also, highly recommend, in addition to your boots and your footwear, plenty of socks. Uh, you can never underestimate the value of a good, clean, dry pair of socks and what that will do for your energy and your morale. Um, okay, so next thing I also feel is the most important water sources. I've got a few examples of those. This is just an old standard issue circa 2009, 2011, somewhere in there. Camelback, um, of course, has a bladder in here, drinking tube. Kind of a narrow mouth on these, so I actually upgraded mine. Um, have a few of them. This one has a nice large mouth on it. Real easy to fill out of a spigot, a sink. You can turn it. has a nice little handle. You can hold that nice and flat. Um, also, a drinking tube is insulated. Protects it from getting cut, any of that kind of stuff. has a nice little carabiner and a nice little cover for the mouthpiece. Awesome little piece of kit. has all these D-rings, so you can either attach it to a pack. Um, you can attach things to it, of course, wear it like a backpack. You can also take this bladder out of here and... Put it in most modern backpacks. Most modern backpacks are going to have a hole for your drinking tube to come out over your shoulder, all that good stuff. Um, so, yeah, awesome piece of kit there. Highly recommend a Camelback because you always have your water with you and it's hands free. It's really awesome. Um, if not, large water jug, something um, that you can easily carry with you. This one in particular has a strap on it, makes it nice. Um, uh, Little piece of equipment I always recommend carrying are carabiners of all different sizes. You can attach all kinds of things. Don't recommend using your store-bought ones for climbing. They're really expensive if you buy the ones for climbing. Got to get them from specialty shops, stuff like that. Um, all kinds of goodness there. Um, <clears throat> ratchet straps. Um, if I have to explain to you how many things these can be used for, you probably... Are not so well adapted as to be helping with a rescue effort <clears throat> so um, but lots of things vehicle recovery holding stuff out of your way you name it these can do it um, I've also seen these used in sticky situations as an expedient tourniquet believe it or not um, so it's not the best because typically you want a tourniquet to be at least two inches wide you don't want to use something this thin because it can actually cause tissue damage, not just stop bleeding. Um, so typically rule of thumb, two inches wide for a, like an emergency quick tourniquet. Um, a lot of belts are okay, stuff like that. But in a pinch, this will work. Um, don't recommend it for your go-to for a tourniquet. Uh, lights, always a good idea. I love this thing. It's a little lantern by Streamlight. has lots of different brightness settings. Also has an SOS flash and a red LED in there too for low light conditions. Um, always awesome to have. This takes AAA batteries, so make sure anything you have that have 
takes batteries, bring extras. Um, nothing sucks more than having a light and you need it and it doesn't work. Um, I also recommend these guys. Uh, these are another Streamlight product. This is their Stylus Pro USB. Um, this one just happens to be orange. They come in all rainbow of colors. This little cover slides back right here, and as you can see, these are USB rechargeable. So if you have your vehicle, your boat, your truck, your car, anything with a USB port, cigarette lighter, you can recharge this light. I also have a Streamlight Stryon that is not gonna be in the video, but those are very bright, very durable, very tough flashlights. They are also rechargeable with a car charger adapter comes with the light. Um, cutting tools, uh, always handy in any kind of emergency survival situation, anything like that. I recommend having one large, nice knife. I know a lot of you guys are going to have something tactical in a Kydex holster and all that good stuff. Um, this is actually just an old one my dad had before he passed away. Uh, it's an old Gerber, Gerber Model 450. Nice sharp stainless blade, nice leather holster. You can stick it on your belt, you can stuff it down in your bag. Don't have to worry about that blade poking anything. So that is always great. I also always recommend carrying a folding pocket knife, just real basic little, you know, as you can see, no thicker than the palm of my hand. Um, nice and sharp. This one just made by Kershaw. Happened to pick that up off of one of the tool trucks. Really expensive. You are perfectly fine in this situation. If you need one, grab one from Walmart. They're like $10. Same thing with those hydration bladders I talked about. You can actually find pretty decent basic versions of these for like 14, 15 bucks in the camping section at Walmart. So you don't have to go blow 50, 60 dollars on one of these. And if you're not the type of person that goes camping and all that kind of stuff, never use it again. Um, so there are cheaper options to all this kind of stuff out there. Pick what's best for you, what fits your budget. A lot of this stuff I already have. I camp a lot. I'm also a mechanic. So uh, it's just stuff that helps me in my daily life. Um, highly, highly recommend if you're going to be doing anything like this to have one of these little guys, as you can see, USB adapter, uh, it is a external battery. Uh, so this will charge most phones four times. It'll charge like a Chromebook or a tablet, uh, twice. Absolutely wonderful to have because you never know, uh, if you're not going to be near a power source to charge any of your devices. Um, another thing I recommend, uh, it's actually across the room, so I'm not going to get up and get that, is a road atlas or a topographical map of the area that you're going to be assisting in. Because keep in mind, these storms, when they're this powerful, are going to knock out power. They can also knock out cell signal, all kinds of stuff. So you're not going to have communications necessarily, and you're more than likely not going to have GPS on a mobile device. Um, so highly recommend having just a good old-fashioned map. Um, of course, lighters of all various different kinds. You'll see this is a nice little windproof, waterproof Zippo, refillable, great to have. Um, you can never go wrong with that. I have a lot of redundancies as far as um, knives, lighters, water sources, that kind of stuff. Uh, also recommend, if you're going to be doing this kind of work, have something along the lines of a machete. But also be great to have an axe. Uh, machete is going to be great for clearing brush, any of that kind of stuff. It can also be good for, I mean, you name it. If you need it out of your way and it can be cut, <clears throat> machete will do the job for the most part. Um, this one's nice, has a sheath, also has a strap on it, so if you just need to throw it on. If you're working out of a John boat or some other kind of rescue vehicle, this would be great because then you can jump out, leave the rest of your kit in the boat, and then this is on you, ready to go. This one also just happens to have a nice little flint and steel with it. It also has a sharpener for the machete, so that all stays in a kit nice and tight and tidy. So that is awesome. Uh, highly recommend, I'm gonna show you a diff couple different kinds. Um, decent pair of sunglasses. You're gonna be out during the day. Um, these are your typical ones you can pick up at a hardware store or whatever. These are also eye protection, uh, Z87 rated. Um, so that is good for protecting your eyes from debris as well as sunlight. These are also cheap, so if you lose them, no big deal. Um, I also will be taking my normal everyday wear sunglasses. These aren't really Oakleys, they're fake. I got them off a tool truck. Awesome guy. Um, headlamp, can't go wrong with that. Nice and hands-free, nice and bright. Um, also make sure you have batteries for that. Some of these are rechargeable, so make sure you have something to charge it with. Um, little just shears. 
awesome for all kinds of stuff, cutting bandages, um, cutting open packages, and you don't necessarily want to yank a knife out, uh, any of that kind of stuff. So highly recommend having something along those lines, especially for cutting bandages. You definitely don't want to stab somebody while you're trying to cut their bandage because you're using a pocket knife and it may be dull. So good sharp pair of shears, awesome to have. Um, you also notice I have waterproofed a lot of things. That is just toilet paper. Definitely recommend bringing it because you don't know what the availability of paper goods are going to be when you're in an area that is flooded out and possibly still raining or anything else you may run into. So TP, you can always take paper towels too, very useful. Um, highly recommend taking just a small bottle of hand sanitizer. Uh, if you are out in a rescue attempt and happen to come across a casualty or anything like that, they may be bleeding all over the place, you're going to want something right on hand besides water to get that off of you. Um, water isn't always the best, especially if blood or something like that is dried on you. It can be kind of sticky. Water don't always take that off. So hand sanitizer is great to have for these kinds of things. Personal hygiene bag, pretty basic deodorant, toothbrush, toothpaste, all that kind of stuff. Just, uh, that's more of a morale thing, really not a necessity, but if you are picking people up off their rooftops from a John boat or anything like that, they'd probably appreciate that you put on deodorant that day. Um, Nice sticky armpit to the face. Nobody likes. Um, also, highly recommend pen, paper, all that good stuff. Write down information. You'll see I also have another lighter in there just so it is waterproof. The Sharpie actually goes back to the first aid kind of stuff. If you do end up having to put a tourniquet on somebody, um, just an old military practice and kind of an old... Um, not necessarily Red Cross or anything like that practice, um, is to take a Sharpie or some kind of marker and actually write a T on the casualty's forehead and circle it and then write the time next to that. That way any professional first responders that later get a hold of this patient know exactly what time that tourniquet was applied because you can typically only keep a tourniquet on for two hours before you are risking loss of limb. Um, so although it is important to stop whatever major bleeding they may have, um, you also want to make sure that whoever gets a hold of that patient down the road knows how long that's been on there so they don't sit there for another two hours with it on and, uh, end up losing an arm because you tried to save their life and didn't document that. Um, this is just a little bundle of it. Highly recommend having some paracord with you. Uh, super strong tensile strength, uh, could be used for lashing down all kinds of things, creating harnesses. You could actually, if you had a broke down boat, you could tow another boat with it. Small boats, John boats, wave runners, that kind of stuff. Um, this actually is not something I'd carry for rescue effort because it's a nice little bundled survival package with some fish hooks and stuff like that in there. But I have other paracord. I just wanted to show you that yet again, carabiner, you can stick this anywhere. Uh, highly recommend basic first aid kit, just some band-aids, gauze, um, dressings, all that kind of stuff. Maybe some antiseptic, a little bit of alcohol, some Q-tips. Um, this actually does have a small sewing kit in there. Uh, so if somebody didn't need to be stitched up right away, could do that if need be. Also very useful, just your basic little uh, folding camp shovel. Um, I know some of this stuff may seem a little redundant for some purposes. However, um, if you do find yourself broke down in a John boat or any kind of other small rescue craft, this can serve a lot of purposes. Um, it could dig you out if you're stuck. Um, this, believe it or not, actually functions great as a paddle in a pinch. I've done it before in a canoe. Um, not the most fun way. Um, but it works. So there is that. Recommend also, this is just for cleanliness as well as keeping it <clears throat> dry until you use it. Bar of soap just to clean up with. Uh, nothing sucks worse than being away from home, trying to help people and catch a couple hours break and you're covered in all kinds of schmutz and you really just want to clean up. So just a basic bar of soap works male, female, um, as long as you have water you will be able to get clean with that. Um, so that's a big help.
Uh, also recommend, as you can see, I have one on. Um, headgear, just kind of keep the sun out of your eyes, keep the sun off your head. Helps greatly with the fatigue, dehydration, all that kind of stuff. Um, swim trunks. Highly recommend these, both uh, male, female, doesn't matter. Um, find a decent pair of board shorts or swim trunks laying around. Females, the only reason I say that is because if you do have to get in the water, you may not necessarily want to be doing it in jeans. So what I would do is I would wear these under whatever pants and boots I was wearing. That way, if I needed to jump into the water or something like that to go after a person, animal, what have you, I could just strip my jeans and my boots off, throw those athletic shoes on out of my pack, and I'd be ready to rock and, the, rock and roll in the water for a couple hours. Um, this is just a little pocket screwdriver, has a magnet on one end, screwdriver blade on the other. Um, these are very, very useful for a lot of things. Uh, if you can't get a hold of one of these, either at Home Depot or Lowe's, just a small screwdriver that fits in your pack conveniently would be awesome to have. Um, you won't realize how much you will use that until you have it and find a use for it. You will, I promise. Uh, last but not, well, not last, recommend having some kind of little cooking pot. Um, boil water, cook some food. I personally don't have a camp stove, so that's part of the reason I have the fire starting stuff is that if there aren't people there handing out food to volunteers and stuff like that, I do like to be able to provide for myself because you never know what amenities you're going to have, what all is going to be open, what's going to be available to you. Um, so you do want to be somewhat self-sustaining, not necessarily like for a week-long camping trip, um, but you want to be able to feed yourself. Hot dogs in these things right here. Um, poor man's MRE. They're nice and light. You can carry a ton of them. Um, no big deal to throw 12 of those in a pack to be able to survive for, you know, anywhere from 6 to 12 days, uh, depending on how you want to ration that out. Um, last but not least, um, I do recommend just because in these types of situations where <clears throat> the world in a certain area has completely fall, fallen apart, um, people do tend to lose their minds a little bit. Uh, so I do highly recommend taking a good, just basic defensive pistol before anyone wants to say anything. It is clear. It is pointed in a safe direction. Magazine is out of it. It's right here. Um, but <clears throat> although you may be trying to help people and have the best intentions, some people in the given area may not necessarily have the best intentions. Uh, and like I said, distress will make people do things that they wouldn't ordinarily do. Uh, so there's that. I don't recommend necessarily goad in on John Boat being all tactical, like Rambo with your nice AR and plate carrier and all that kind of crap. That's not what you're there for. Um, granted, if you do decide to carry your gear on a plate carrier, not a bad idea. It keeps it nice and close to your body, all that good stuff. Um, but I think that just about wraps it up. There are a few things I wanted to mention but didn't really have on hand right away. Um, emergency flares, always good for signaling. That's a great thing to have on hand. Um, an axe. Uh, I know I showed the machete, but an axe would be very beneficial if you are in some kind of rescue attempt. Uh, it has been seen a lot in these past natural disasters where when the floodwaters start rising, people are going to go where they can get above that water. Um, sometimes the storm's so bad outside, they don't necessarily want to go outside to get to high ground. Uh, so they end up going into their attic. Uh, so you may very well end up coming across some homes where people have retreated into their attic and you can't get them out because the water is still up to the eaves or it's over the door or anything like that. And I don't recommend swimming around underwater in a house because you never know what you're getting into. Um, so you may realize that your only option to get these people out of their attics is to chop your way through their roof. Um, so an axe would be really handy to have in something like that. Um, but I think that just about wraps it up. Uh, good backpack, aside from everything I mentioned. Uh, I'm sure you guys can come up with lots more things, but that was just a good basic starting point, and this video is already almost 20 minutes long. Um, but anyway, if you guys do decide to head down, uh, be safe. And I hope this video helped you out a little bit in preparing for that.